Let's go back on over. This time we're looking at the sales tax situation, how are sales tax gonna be fitting in with the bank feeds like normal taxes throw a wrench into the whole system when we have to deal with the sales tax. You might have a usage tax if you're outside the United States. So let's just, same concept, it's gonna mess everything up. And so we're gonna have to figure out how do the bank feeds fit into it. Let's take a look at our flow chart to think through that. So the sales tax by concept is a tax on the customer, not really supposed to be on the business itself. It's using the business as the tax collector. So the government saying, hey, business, you're our tax collector now. We're gonna impose the tax on the customer. That means every time we make a sale, we need to determine, is this something that's gonna be subject to sales tax? And if it is, we need to collect the sales tax, track the sales tax, and then pay the sales tax to whoever's forcing us to be their collection agent uh, at, at a future point in time. Now, the QuickBooks system has a nice little widget or tool to help us to do that. There's kind of a couple components or three things to keep in mind when setting up the sales tax. One, you gotta turn on the sales tax. You've gotta, in doing so, put the correct items who's where you're subject to the sales tax. Uh, two, and then two, you've got to assign your items to determine which items you're selling are subject to sales tax. Some might not be subject to sales tax. Some might be things, uh, sales of inventory are often more likely subject to sales tax in the United States at least. And then three, are there some customers that are exempt from the sales tax, even though uh, other customers may be subject to the sales tax because they're a charity or, or they're, they're not the end user or something like that. Uh, and so those are the three things we gotta kinda keep in mind. Now, with regards to bank feeds, we, we noticed that on the sales side of things, it depends, depends on the industry we're in in terms of how we can deal with the bank feeds. Because in the easiest situation, if we're in like gig work or something, we can just basically wait till it clears the bank, record the sales with the deposits. But if we're in a cash register situation, we'll often want to enter the, the information into the sales receipt form, then make the deposit using the bank feeds as more of a check, an internal control, a, a form to help us with the bank reconciliation. And if we're on an accrual system, we would have to invoice, receive payment, record the deposit, the bank feeds typically helping out once again as kind of a check uh, and helping us with the reconciliation as opposed to recording the actual transaction. Now you can you can imagine a situation where you're subject to sales tax using the easiest method over here if you're able to and just waiting till everything clears the bank and then just recording revenue uh, with the deposit form. If you're using that system, you can't really use the sales tax widget that's designed to be used within QuickBooks because QuickBooks has designed the system to record sales using the sales receipt and the invoices. If you just record a deposit, you don't have the items. The items are gonna be necessary for QuickBooks to try to ta uh, track the sales tax component to it. So you, so you can't really do it with just a deposit form if you're gonna use the full kind of widget system within QuickBooks. Now you could work around that. You could just, you could just basically charge people the amount plus the sales tax and then you can kind of back into how much sales tax you owe based on your your uh, earnings and so we might take a look at that in a second but that's the first thing to note if you're using the full service system within quickbooks then you're going to have to use an invoice or a sales receipt to record the transactions and you're going to have to set up the items so that you can drive the sales tax that will be recorded at the point of sale and then we can use kind of the sales tax widget to pay the sales tax at a future point. So let's see how that works. Let's 